Hey everybody, welcome to part two. Uh, we did a short drive over into France, like uh, you've seen on the first video. On the second video, you'll see some of the Maginot line and some of the bunkers that have been taken care of and some that have not been very well taken care of. They're, uh, they're all over uh, the northeastern corner of France, all along down, all the way down to near Switzerland. Uh, several of them have been uh, not taken care of and other ones have been taken care of very well and even turned into museums. Hopefully we'll be able to go back and we'll start a, uh, do a video on one of those. But until then, enjoy. Now we're off here to the next spot. And one of the most awesome things about living where we do, we are now at the Maginot Line. We're visiting a major bunker down in this area. And then there's several other smaller bunkers all over in this area. Did they now, clear the landmines out of this area? Probably, dude. Okay. So here is one of the major entrances. What happens if I go up top? Would there be landmines up there? As you can see, it's pretty worn down at this point, but it's still accessible. This was actually a museum. We just didn't make it in time to be able to go to it. Let's see, three different gun ports at the entrance. <clears throat> In this area, of course, it being the Maginot Line, as you've seen by that map, there's a huge tunnel area underneath this, this mountain. You can barely see it, but inside there, there's actually another gun port straight in front of us. And I know nothing about the rest of this you one. Well, we're gonna walk around this area today. There's, uh, like I showed, there's several other bunkers in this area. So we're gonna kinda explore and see what else we can find because uh, we have not explored the Maginot line much. Um, driving in, we've seen several different uh, little bunkers on the side of the road. And in fact, um, this one right here, We've seen that one coming in, and this is where we're at now. So, um, we might go up this way, see if we can see some of those. And then there's numerous smaller bunkers up that way, so maybe we'll go up to that area, drive up to that area next, or over in that area. So our next spot. Right up this road, you can see the next bunker. We haven't made it very far. Uh, we just kind of examined the map and we noticed that there were several really close to this one. The last one, I apologize. So we're gonna come up here. Kids are being silly. <clears throat> Pretty up here though. Walk up a little bit further, and there's a couple other places up there, so we'll go up to those too after this. <coughs> Whoop, a little muddy. It's kind of 
kind of shows you how it's built. And the sectors of fire, how they cross over. There's an entrance. And a moat type thing. <clears throat> oh, and that one's actually got a some sort of mechanism to hold the weapon still in there. And it's another door down there. Crazy kids. Oh. Let's look from up top. <clears throat> hey, we're well, gonna placements up on top. A couple of them. not showing any signs of any damage which is not surprising for this area because the French kind of just surrendered this area after the Germans went through Belgium swooped down they didn't really have much of a choice yeah. I you a stick. so I will continue here in a what? few there's the ones we just left and there's another one right in front of us, right up here on top of the hill. It's like super duper sloppy muddy up here right now. And I've got the wrong shoes on. <clears throat> so this area was very well preserved because it wasn't destroyed. There are other areas that are decently uh, maintained. They, uh, <clears throat> a lot of them are just deteriorating because of the time. But several museums up and down the border. <clears throat> Yeah, it looks like this one took no damage either. I believe this would have been one of their elevated guns. Basically rides down beneath until they need to and that whole assembly there pops up with the gun inside of it now next to the observation point we're about 50 meters up the hill from that last point and now we're at the observation point Amazing vantage point And that should be <clears throat> Should be Beautiful
November of 44 is when this area fell to the 90th ID during World War II. So that is what is mostly left today. You can see this is the final works, final building in this area in between 39 and 40 before the war. And then this was actually post uh, 1871, before World War I, uh, because of the War of 1870. <clears throat> we will cap all these off just like how the other ones normally do. smaller ports I'm not sure what those were for and then there's a single one out here <laughs> try not to fall on my foot machine gun ports right there some sort of encased two sites one on each with this as a view. And I'll have to see what we can find next. So uh, Braden stumbled across all this barbed wire out here and the old uh, pickets that were holding it up. Just digging through an area trying to find the next bunker. You can see it's all along this area with this one little gap in between it that we found. Either way, come on, Emma. It's not electrical, baby. So, this is what we found. We eyed through the woods, is where they're at right now, which is the next bunker area along this, this section of the line. I don't know if there's actually going to be any access or any actual bunkers that we can see, but at least it's a gun turret. Just follow where I walk. <clears throat> this is really the perfect time of year to come looking for stuff like this because of ticks and mosquitoes. You don't have to worry about any of that kind of stuff right now. So, yep, this is another one. Surrounded They're capped off. Can I climb on it? Excuse me. Yep, you can see you inside there. The gun port's actually still open. And let's see if there's an entrance over here because it kind of drops off on this side. Which, yep, somewhere down there is the entrance to this bunker. So I guess we'll head down there here in a second. So we found a whole bunch more of that barbed wire. It's really cool. Some of it's still actually up like this area. But you can see how it was spread out. I thought that was really cool. And it even goes down the hillside. Which that's where we're headed to now because there's the front of the right. bunker complex we were just on top of. So let us slide down this hill and we'll continue when we get down there. Alright, we made it down to the front. Here's the entrance to it. like a wooden doorway over there it's kind of cool looking looks like all the rest of them they almost got like a moat 
bleeding to them, which means you'd have to have that metal bridge like the other ones. I didn't see those on the other ones. There's even a gun port down there in the lower part, so if you do fall in, they can still take care of you. Really, really awesome. It's a good little ways down there. <laughs> awesome. Oh, about fell. Ugh. Go over here to the other side and go look at the other one. Watch Braden walk over there. It's a Texaco barrel, by the way, not a Mexico barrel. Close it's a Texaco barrel. Anyway, that kind of full thing. of junk. And I don't see us making it over there to open that. So, Magic cool find now. And I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Um, next time, hopefully, we'll be going down near the Black Forest and uh, be able to see some of the waterfalls and some of the scenery around there. Um, until next time, take care, guys.